Hello, everyone. It's a slightly bigger crowd than expected, but first of all, I'm not here to sell anything, so don't be afraid. <laughs> My idea is trying to tie the knots between factory automation and warehouse automation or info logistics in general. And how do we get there? I mean, I would like to start to introduce the comedy Dambach in a short way, um, trying to point out the importance of info logistics. What are the main automation solutions out there in the market? So how about Dambach? We're working in the intra logistics since 45 years in all kinds of industries. So we never actually plan to specialize in automotive or e-commerce. So wherever there's a production, there will be an automated warehouse in the best case by using Dumbach products. So despite the product, it's not about electrics, electronics, automotive, car bodies, e-commerce. All of those industries are generally growing, changing their production lines, trying to automotive, automate. And in the best case, it does come with a new automated warehouse. So I will spare you a lot of slides with technical details about the products. So despite the 280 slides, I'm just trying to choose three. So what you're going to see is a selection of automated storage and retrieval machines for different kinds of loads, load carriers, despite unit load or pallets or mini loads or small parts. So on the left side, you're going to see a pallet stagger crane, which is actually the most known product if it comes to storage technology. So what does it do? It does have a chassis for running, it does have a lifting device for lifting, and it comes with different kind of load handling devices for the storing and retrieval process. But nevertheless, the production changes, the demand changes, and the storage capabilities does have to increase as well. So we're always looking for new technologies like increasing storage capabilities, storage space. So we come up with new products like the shuttle, carriers, full shuttle systems. Conveyor systems are always a part of an automated warehouse. If it comes to the apron, the warehouse transport itself, there is a huge priority. So if it comes to classic straight line conveyors for pallets or unit loads, even for rail guided vehicles, so bridging long gaps, so that's just a uh, yeah, small selection. Load handling technology, I will get into this a bit later. It's actually the thing, the product, the equipment, which handles, which takes care of the load carrier itself, which does get directly in touch. Despite the fact if it's a special load carrier, is it a full car body, if it's a box for e-commerce, or is it just a random pallet? So what's the importance of info logistic? I mean, what does it mean? What does it tie to a smart factory automation? To especially create some sense for the market, I brought some basic numbers. So, I mean, yeah, they are based on 2020, but nevertheless, in 2020, there was a production volume just for Germany around 24 billion euros. Currently, slightly decreasing, unfortunately. We talk about 23.5. But nevertheless, there is more than automotive. There's another industry, and it's called intra logistics. The number of employees, to give you a feeling about that, it's around 128,000 people. This number is constantly increasing. We talk around 135 up to 140,000 employees within Germany. And that's something, I mean, you guys know them better I, than I do, but we are still pretty proud of that. And if it comes to intra logistics, automated equipment, we still number one in Germany for exporting those. So what are the changing demands from a logistics perspective? And what are the requirements? All of us are facing labor shortage, despite the fact if it comes to production, despite the fact if it's warehouse automation, we have to face it somehow. And to be honest, it's getting worse and worse. What people are looking for else, it's like simplifying the warehouse process itself like making complexity easier, somehow finding ways to handle those complexity. And everyone wants to increase their capabilities, and that's what hiding behind handling the entire production flow, starting from the inbound, starting from the storing, starting from the distributing and packaging and sorting and so on. Everyone wants for sure trying to lower their cost. That's the most challenging we especially currently facing right now. And everyone wants to have a future-proof investment. And it's quite complex if you just take a deeper look into warehouse because 
demands are constantly changing. So you need to implement an automated warehouse which can be adapted, which can be modified, which is scalable. So what does it mean in, from an objective perspective? We're looking for automation, logistic automation solutions, which doesn't need any kind of human intervention. So trying to reduce the manual process as much as possible. And if you take a deeper look at a picture, it's currently there are still customers, which is quite the opposite. There are potentials to automate those production or warehouse facilities. What are the automation levels in general? I mean, you can categorize those just to four basic levels. There is non-automation. So manual driven, no IT support, people running around looking for the right e-commerce article you just ordered. Maybe they find it in a day, maybe they never find it, maybe it's destructed or whatever. There's the next step trying to help with decision automation, which is most likely IT related, which means you do have the right software, which helps you to avoid issues, trying to show you the right information at the right time, but still mainly driven by manual processes. So system automation, that's something uh, where we started to grow out 45 years ago. It means building equipment which is automated, which helps you to handle goods, no matter what kind of size, no matter what kind of product itself, fully automated equipment which helps you to handle products. And what is everyone striving or looking for? It's a highly sophisticated, intelligent automation. It means trying to have the best fit out of automated equipment, software, warehouse control systems, and the right IT infrastructure. So if that's the clear path, why we are not there yet? Because it's just not that easy. And that's what most of our customers, especially in the US, are always facing. There's absolutely nothing about logistics automation, not at all. Not starting from the scratch, not finding the right partners, not implementing it. So and that's something we have to face. That's definitely something we have to work on. And how do we tackle those uh, challenges? So for us as a product developer and components deliverer, we're looking for the right automation platform, the right automation foundation. It's not about distincting mechanics, hardware or software. It's finding... It's all about finding the right setup, the perfect match. And always more important is increasing customer service capabilities. Some of you guys know from car production, it's updates via the air, adding more functionalities via apps, and so on. And certainly, never forget, it's all about economic benefits. Customers doesn't implement an automated system for fun. They have to make money out of it somehow. So that's a project we did in the past previously if you take a look at those pictures i personally think it's quite impressive because there is so much stuff so much equipment which is moving such a huge variety of products it starts with the inbound it starts with distribution it starts with layer picking storing retrieval packing outbound and so on so what i'm trying to do right now is just to give you some impressions about the many products which are out there which are automated which does have controls, which does have a certain intelligence. And it starts with machines which look like robots or tanks, however I like to call them, which should at least trying to help you to unload trucks full automatically. So even the inbound of trucks should be automated in the future. There are automatic solutions with gantry cranes for layer picking, trying to distribute the individual items of each pallet. There are robotic technologies well known in the automation or smart factory automation systems for item picking. But you do have different kind of shuttle technologies, transporting technologies, despite the fact if they are free moving or if they are guided and so on. So that's just some selection. At the end of the day, you still have customers who would like to implement. It's, it's all about labor at the end of the day. They would like to have a working spot, which are maximum automated, but at the end of the day, there has to be someone. Okay, so we have to make it possible to find the right information at the right spot, to find the right equipment which hands over the right article at the right time. So it's quite challenging. So what do those products have in common? Everyone wants to have them smart, digital, automated, communicating with each other and so on. And what's the application from our perspective, like as a producer? We need software and machinery as one application. So don't distinguish, don't separate. That's 80s. That's not work anymore. And I know it because we started with steelwork. So first steelwork, hardware planning, putting cables on top of it didn't fit. Okay, rip it out. Next one, starting programming. 
And that's the worst thing you could do right now. Software. I mentioned software. That's quite a tricky part because there are so much passwords out there. I'm trying to give you at least an impression about the main wordings you will find in warehouse automation software. It's a WMS, which actually stands for warehouse management. The main application is inventory management, resource management, and that's it. There are so much more definitions out of it, and there is no clear distinction between those three softwares, but if I have to categorize it, I would do it like this. There is a warehouse control system, which takes care of the controls of the equipment, which takes care of the controls of sensors, motors, drives, storage technology, conveyors, and so on. There is a wording in production and factory design, MES, and they're trying to adapt those approach with warehouse execution systems, trying to do some kind of cherry picking by using certain functions out of the WMS area and out of the area of the double warehouse control system. Improving performance. Whenever you touch a product, like you're going to get a new car, it should be better in something. Higher acceleration, faster, less fuel consumption or less battery consumption, energy consumption, and so on. And for sure, giving additional benefits to customers in terms of service capabilities. If we would be one of our first customers and trying to use a new technology, we want nothing else like having the most compact shuttle in the market because it wouldn't make sense for us if we just rebuilt a shuttle with the same parameters. It should be better. If not, it wouldn't make any sense. So let's say, okay, it should be most compact. It should for sure help us to reduction production costs. There could be many ways to do that. And it should be more robust because especially, and I cannot emphasize this enough, in the US, everything has to be maximum robust. And it's quite challenging. So it comes with shock resistance, cold storage approved, and so on. Open communication, because we always hate to make sure that those technologies able to communicate with different kind of PLCs, different kind of interfaces. So here we go. That's the actual product. And it's a shuttle. And what's the function? The shuttle itself is running in a shelf in a rack channel and it does have the function of positioning and retrieving pallets or unit loads. So what have been the achievements out of this? Because right now we just implemented the same functions again, for sure, smaller, but that's not it. We said, okay, we can reduce shuttle space by 10%, which means, first of all, nothing if you compare it. But later on, if you start planning a full warehouse, believe me, each millimeter counts. And there's a picture which will underline those. Increased positioning accuracy. For sure, it always comes to storage density, gaining additional storage space. Having a higher storage space means selling an additional pallet locations, which at the end of the day means nothing else than money for the user. Improved shock resistance, more robust availability. That's something I already heard in automotive. You always know the 90.9%. That's something all the equipment does have to deliver. Higher performance, I already mentioned, everything should be faster, higher, and so on. So just to give you an impression, that's the existing shuttle, and that's the new shuttle. So same functionalities, smaller size. And how did it turn out if you take a look in the data? So we managed, even with a smaller size, to increase the running distance by 33% by gaining more space, for example, in this case for power caps. Driving performance could be increased by 20%, acceleration by 33%, and the capability of load weight by 15%. And if you combine those data with the fact that we could even decrease the size, I personally think it's quite impressive. And the good thing is, without making any kind of approaches in terms of sales or advertising, we already sold 50 shuttles even it was still under development because customer already recognized beneficials out of it. And what does it mean, the beneficials? There's a slight any small animation. So you do have the shuttles running within the rack, running within the shelf. So if you have a close storage density, it probably helps you to store more pallets in a channel. If you have really small size in terms of height, you can probably add another level. And if you multiply channel depths, and length and another level, you can probably gain thousands of more pallet locations just by adding millimeters per millimeters after 40 meters in height. 
So it was quite a success and it's cold storage approved, thankful. So we could win a lot of customers which are actually forced to build full automated warehouses just by the environmental. So what's next? I mean, there are some advantages we successfully implemented in the first product and we're currently assessing and investigating the potentials to add more technology within our new small parts stacker crane and it always comes with new requirements. So we would like to start or reduce factory installation efforts help us to save money and time, reducing control cabinet size to minimum. I will show you why that's quite a challenge and what's the benefit. No controls at a load handling device, improved data communication and performance increase. It's always the same, faster, higher and so on. So what was already achieved? I mean, we worked on a new load handling device or a load handling attachment, which is able to be fully decentral controlled, which helps us to be fully pre-installed, pre-tested. The processing times could be reduced and the weight itself. So we personally think it's a perfect match. And we already quoted it several times to help us to handle different kind of small parts, despite the fact if it's battery cell, like in this use case, or is it just a regular box. So what does it mean for the end customer? Because actually he doesn't care at the beginning. Okay, you're smaller and so on. But what does it mean for him? And I think we compared the previous technology with the new one. And we do think we can reduce volume by 64% and we can lower the approach dimension and reduce weight. What does it mean? Reducing weight means less energy consumption. Lowering the approach dimension, and here we go again, helps us to gain additional space. Additional space always means more pallet locations. Pallet locations, that's the success for the end customer. Same technology, 2,000 pallets more. In the end of the day, it's money for the end custom. So that's the theoretical part, and it's quite a lot, I suppose. <laughs> so let's go to a real project. Some basic key figures. It's in Loire, Germany. There was investment capability of 25 million euros. It was for electronic parts production. And in this case, successfully or fortunately for us, it does come with an automation solution for the warehouse itself. And we do have an area of 8,900 square meters. So like I said at the beginning, automation is everything but not easy. And it always starts with consulting and assessment. And what we always do is trying to assess the material flow. There's a material flow matrix, and I don't even try to explain it. But what it's trying to show is you have a lot of interactions. You have to define and understand where and how you're going to move pallets, mini loads, what are the throughput rates, and so on. And based on those calculations, you can define warehouse data, like the number of pallet locations you do need, the number of small parts locations you do need, the transport speed between different kind of technologies. And if you understand this, now you can start choosing the right technology. And how does it look like? And that's actually a 3D animation of the current project in Laura. At the end of the day, there are small parts, stacker cranes with the new Bosch load handling devices and the technologies in the drive. We managed to implement pallet stacker cranes for storing and retrieving pallets. And there are different, quite conservative, straight line conveyors, which can act as a buffer as well. But you also have working spaces, which have to interact with different kind of workers and staff. And you even have a fully automated layer picking solution in the front. And I think that's quite impressive. That's the current project. So I know this was quite a lot and I'm trying to squeeze in much as possible and I uh, hope it wasn't too much, but I'm really excited to hear questions and thank you.